Hi everyone, I'm Nanette from the Nanette Kruger Metal Embossing Academy and Nanette Kruger Metal Arts and it's my absolute joy and pleasure to welcome Susan Kamsti to the channel today. Susan is from Blink Ideas, which is roughly translated into Bright Ideas. Um, it's an Afrikaans name and she's a wonderful metal artist. Um, I've been looking at her work for years. I've been admiring her work for so long. And um, yeah, just really happy to be chatting with you today, Susan. Um, would you like to tell us how your journey started and how you got into metal embossing? Hi, hello. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Yo, I was had a fine art training and I was mm -hmm. painting for many years and I was looking for something just to zoosh up my paintings a bit. When I saw Sandy's book in the bookstore, right, and I was I was paging through it and it really spoke to me and I bought the book just right there and the, it was actually a craft shop not a, a bookstore a craft shop right. and I also bought pewter and the basic tools <laughs> I got out and I tried it I used a book like a textbook I yes. worked through the projects from start and I was very really disappointed because this didn't turn out the way I thought it was going that was like my first one <laughs> Yeah, oh, and I, I just okay. couldn't get it right. Mm -hmm. um, but I persevered, and then I met Leanne Liebenberg, mm -hmm. and she introduced me to the the pewter, what do you call that, the non, the one without the thing? Without the lead, okay, yep, unleaded one. Without the lead, yes, right. yes, the lead-free pewter. Oh, awesome. Amazing. I spent almost a day in a studio. Wow. Phenomenal phenomenal oh, honestly and then I bought from her the mm -hmm. lead reputer and I started over again and then everything just fell into place um, and then I did my little the little car wrecks the old and antique car wrecks Ooh, in the right. paintings I'm going to share my screen um, because yeah. I've got them here just hang on a second uh, there we go Yes, those ones. Oh, they are brilliant. They, so were these your first ones? Those were, um, I don't know if they were the first ones. Probably. Um, I still got those in my um, patio, in my bry room. Okay. I'm still hanging there with a lot, a whole range Gosh, of other ones. Beautiful. I love how you've done that. So, so that's what you wanted to do when you started, is you wanted to incorporate something else into your paintings. That is correct, yes. Beautiful. So I did that. Oh, and I and they, take, they took off. Um, I had quite a few commissions and I sold a couple of them. Right. And then I stopped painting altogether and I just focused on the metal embossing. Right. After that. Okay. So interesting. Um, Let me just see. Yeah. Can you see my screen and me at the moment? I'm just fiddling yes, with... Yes, I can. I can. You can. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Because you have disappeared for some reason off my screen. Let me just see if I can um, get you back. Oh, gosh, hang on. Weird. <laughs> um, while, while you're fiddling there, I can just um, continue um, yes, telling my story. Yes, fine. Yes, sure. Um, Mary Ann referred me to Lee because I was looking for somebody to take classes. Right. In the embossing. And she referred me to Lee in Maple Strand. Okay. I was with her about on and off, I think for about a year, year and a half, maybe two years. Right. Excellent teacher. Um, that was, she was the only one who taught me who I went to for classes. And mm -hmm. then I also did the oh, vintage pewter embossing online. Oh, lovely. Right. Carol Park. Yes. Is this um, where this one came from? And the one that you're sharing now? Yes. No, that was before that. That was okay. even before I went to Lee. Oh, right. Wow. <laughs> Goodness. That you didn't need the classes then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I think those ones are still the late based um, pewter ones. The very okay. soft. I didn't right. come right with it. Yeah, um, I find with a leaded one, um, I have mixed results with a leaded one, and sometimes the patina doesn't take on it. There's like blotchy spots where 
Yes. It just doesn't take. It's it's not a it's not the best quality. I'm not struggling with that. I make sure that the that the metal is very clean. Right. Um, I, I clean it with methylated spirits and sometimes right. with acetone as well to remove any oily fingerprints. Absolutely. Or oily marks on it because there's often still machine oil um, from from right. the rolling machines, the manufacturing oil okay. on it as well. That you makes have sense. to remove everything. Yeah. So are you also working with a lead-based pewter? At this moment, yes. I, I bought a whole heap of it before we left South Africa, okay. um, but it was quite damaged. So I've, I've still got some of it that I want to use, but I, I use highly detailed designs on it so you can sort of hide the scratches and things on it. Um, okay. But I'm looking forward. I ordered some. Uh, I ordered some pewter very recently, so um, it should be here before the end of the year, hopefully. So, so looking forward to getting finally getting some unleaded pewter. So that's going to be a whole new, a whole new chapter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can really yeah. put your hand into it. You won't go through it. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Yeah, because that's that's interesting with the with the other one is, um, and people are mortified when they poke holes through it, but it's so easy, especially if you use those sharp um, the Teflon tip tools, Two. sharp yeah. ones. It's very easy to go through it. So, so that's good news. <laughs> oh, you have to, have to be careful seeing that. Have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome! Um, so, um, so you, you so you studied under Lee and then um, with Carol Park as well. That's right. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and then I came across um, Magdalena Muldoon on the internet. Yes, and I saw that you had a book. I think it was called Metal Metal Embossing Workshop. Yes, that's right. Like that. That's it. And. I was searching for that book all over. I couldn't find it. Eventually, I found it in a library. Okay. Um, and I've taken it out. And then um, I contacted her. I can't remember if it was just through a website or what it was. And they said that the book is out of print. Or it was out of oh, print. No. So I've taken this book out at the library. Um, and it works like that. You can take the book out for two weeks. Then you can mm -hmm. either bring it back or renew mm -hmm. it if you're not done with the book. So right. after two weeks, I just renewed the take out on the book. And I went on and on with that book. And it was mm -hmm. about probably um, six weeks or two months that I had that book. Oh, brilliant. And I found the library again and I said, I want to renew this book. They said, no, you can't. There's a waiting list. You must bring it back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I took the book back. They literally had to remove that book forcefully from me because I didn't want to <laughs> let it go. I <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I, yeah, I couldn't buy it anyway. Yeah. So I thought, okay, if this is the game you want to play, then I'm going to go back on the waiting list. Absolutely. And when everybody else had the book, I just took it out again. Persevere. <laughs> yeah. I so enjoyed oh, your awesome. interview with Magdalene. It was really, really oh, lovely. She's, she's lovely, isn't she? And just... Oh. What I'm blown away by with um, with Magdalena and Elisha, they just share the knowledge that they have so freely. Um, it's just available, and whoever wants to learn, I mean, they're just masterful at their craft and um, and just the way in which they share their passion. Hey, I think that's how we all learn because oh. it's still a struggle in a lot of countries to find pewter. It's still a struggle to find um, resources on the topic, and yeah, I mean, they've been a massive help to me when I just started learning as well. There wasn't yes. anything available. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you ventured just, sorry, you ventured into a whole new um, new avenue with your metal, with um, with a sterling silver now. Yeah, but, but in between that, um, it was actually after Magdalena's book that I um, switched over to the uh, aluminium. Right. Yeah, in South Africa, we call it craft metal, right. not aluminium. Yes. Some people call it foils, but we call it craft metal, the colored one. That's right. Um, so I did that for quite a while, and that is also what the Mad About Metal book is about. Okay. Working with the, with the craft metal. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. So how did the whole venture with the book start? I was struggling to get a material, mm -hmm. um, the craft metal, mm. and I 
also found on the internet uh, supply in South Africa, which is also in Malpo Strand. So I contacted right. her and I said, I'm doing things and I can't get material. Mm. And she came back and she said, okay, she'll supply my material. And we just talked and I showed her what I did um, initially. Was, she was quite amazed with what I did with her uh, material, yeah. with her metals. And uh, we just talked and we said, I said, actually, I was thinking of writing a crafter's journal mm -hmm. um, with w whatever I'm doing, I'm going to journalize every day and right. maybe at the end I'll publish it, maybe not. And she awesome. said she already had an idea for a book and she already contacted um, Lee to join her. Oh, so it fabulous. was us three that did it together. Yeah. And we're so different, um, versatile in everything that we do. Yes. Um, the strange thing is, <laughs> at the end, when people bought a book because they knew I wrote it, and my family mm -hmm. and friends had bought a book, they page through the book, and then they'll say, oh, this is so beautiful. When did you do this? And I said, no, I didn't do that. It was either Monica or Lee who did Right, that. <laughs> right. Each time, they didn't like the stuff. That's <laughs> interesting. I, oh, my word. <laughs> I love, I must say, that's one thing I admire about your work is it's completely out of the box. You've just got these brilliant ideas and the way in which you, I mean, it's like the project you shared with us this month, the different textures and the different colors, you've got a sort of like a grungy feel to it, which, which is stunning. I love it. Um, I think it's one of the things, I've said it on a few interviews before, um, the thing I love most about metal embossing is how you can see people's unique style and creativity come through and you can start recognizing whose work it is. That's fabulous. Absolutely. You can yeah. give the same design to different people and you will exactly. get different results yeah. every time. Yeah. Beautiful. I try to recreate antique, um, almost, a, mm. I almost want a medieval feel right. on my pieces. Cool. That really so with old. lots of character, hey? Yeah, color and yeah. We, the other two ladies, um, they're bright and shiny and white and a oh. light feeling to it. And that is apparently what most people like more than what I do. It's fascinating. I just actually realized with my own work, um, initially I used lots of color and I stepped on so many toes of the more traditional pewter artists who said, oh my goodness, you cannot paint on pewter. Um, but I just loved it, how the color popped, especially when you use glass paint, that's sort of translucent. Oh, yes. I, absolutely. I just absolutely no. love the look. But now, 16 years in, I find that I'm, I'm, I'm moving towards the more traditional look, um, lots of texture, lots of depth, and also to bring out that sort of aged look. So it's funny how your work yeah. evolves, eh? It is. Yeah. Um, you're talking about the glass paint, and what I like a lot really is what Sandy does with the gold. Oh yes. Um, the gold on the pewter. Yes. Absolutely amazing. It's, it's just stunning. Yeah. It's just another dimension yeah. into, into the work. Yeah. Absolutely. There's so much creative freedom in this craft. Eh? I mean, whether you want to use color or, and, and there's so many options again, because you can use alcohol inks, glass paint, gilded space, yeah. sharpies, whatever, whatever you want to use. Um, and it, it just gives, a whole new level to your work, which is, yeah, I, I love it. It's addictive. <laughs> Very versatile. You can't it go is. wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, what's your favorite metal to work with? Um, since I've been doing my uh, metalsmith training, I started mm -hmm. metalsmith training last year, so I'm doing a lot with the silver because there's so much yeah. that I still need to learn, um, right. skills and techniques that I, I need to learn. Mm -hmm. So I focus, I'm at this stage more focused on that, okay. but I like working, um, incorporate the brass and the um, copper with that. Because silver is so expensive. If you, yeah. try, if you try a new project, normally I just try it first in either brass or right. copper because it's less expensive. Exactly. And if I find that, okay, it works out, then I'll go over and I'll, I'll do it in the silver. But okay. you always go back to, to your basics. So, yeah. and the, the main thing is still, I'm still doing what I like most, and that is getting texture onto the metal. Whether I yes. work on pewter or craft metal or silver or copper, it's the main the thing for me is to get the texture. Yeah, yeah. Get the texture onto the metal. 
That's gorgeous. I saw so how you um, how you started experimenting with the etching process on your metal, and I, I was just scrolling through your Facebook feed again last night with those protea designs and just the detail that you can capture is just absolutely amazing. Amazing, yes. I actually wanted to start doing the, the um, etching before Mad About Metal happened. That was oh, my next right. project to etch. So okay. I had to put that on the back burner for two years while we were on the book. Right. Um, yeah, but the etching is amazing. It's just not that mm. um, I want to start doing electro etching because it's more environmental. Yes. Things. Because yes. the etching that I do now is with the acids and I don't Lots like Lots of them. chemicals, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the thing about this craft. So because um, the patina and the polish and all these things, you have to work in a well-ventilated environment and it's, it's probably not the best thing for the environment. So, um, yeah, definitely not. Yeah, being conscious. And the gloves and... Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a pity. Um, I think that's why I, when I started teaching, I, I started teaching on aluminium just because of the cost firstly and i feel yeah. you know what you can practice to your heart's delight on aluminium because it's because it's cost effective and also you can use um craft paint you don't need the gloves you don't need the polish all of those things so um yeah <laughs> it's a bit of a moral issue <laughs> moral <laughs> dilemma <laughs> yeah it is a dilemma actually yeah it is i wonder if there's a way around that eh? i probably i don't know not, not for the patina on. No, it's not. A, no, I don't. Think no, that. no. Hmm. Yeah, not going to be the same. You can, use, you can use acrylic paint like you do on the aluminium, but it's not. It's be just the not same. the same. No, no. It's definitely not the same because when you start polishing off the patina, you can create different levels of um, of darkness and lightness and play around with it. The more you yeah. polish it, but with acrylic paint, you sort of when you wipe it off. It's I mean, either on or off. Exactly. Exactly. You're going to end up with a more shiny product, I think, than um, when you use the patina. So it's a, it's a workaround, but it's probably not ideal. <laughs> yeah, that's the uniqueness of the pewter. Yeah, absolutely. So what were your greatest challenges when you started out? Oh, tools and material. Yeah. And it's funny enough, um, that is still a problem. Even now with working on mm. silver, there are mm. some of the patinas that I can't get. Okay. Um, because so few people are using so few people are using it that uh, mm. the the business is done when I import the mm. chemicals. They have to import yeah. huge amounts, bulk orders. And I remember mm. when I started using the Ranger vintage patina. Yes. That wasn't price. available in South Africa at uh. all. But I needed I honestly wanted that to use for the book. Mm. And I came across a printing company in Joburg that used some of the other Ranger inks. Okay. So they imported from from Ranger mm -hmm. a lot of material often. And okay. I said, don't you want to just add the, the vintage patinas for me with your yeah. next order? And they were Absolutely. so kind. They did that. Oh. Um, I ordered quite a few from them. And I used that for the book. I still have that. Yes, I yeah. still use that a lot. Same. I ordered. Like I mean, we've we've been in New Zealand for almost five years, and I remember I bought my Ranger um, patinas probably about two years before we came out. I'm still using them. I was just sitting doing a project yesterday. They're seven years old, and they work like a bomb. None of them have dried out. Yes. You just shake them up well, and and off we go. It's the best investment I've ever made. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love it. Yeah. So um, what I found with the Ranger products as well. So luckily. New Zealand is not big on craft craft supply stores like we were in South Africa. There's, there's not the same variety than we had back there. But what I found is scrapbooking is massive in New Zealand. There's lots of scrapbooking supplies okay. and scrapbooking stores. And so through those, I'm able to get um, some of the range of products, the alcohol inks, um, some of the stamping products. So... So luckily I found some of that, but for me as well, um, importing patina and those kind of things is still a problem. There's, I think there's a lot of regulation around importing chemicals and you have to do the bulk orders um, in order exactly. to get that in. So it is a bit of a yeah. schlep. Yeah. So. It's funny, scrapbooking used to be uh, huge in South Africa as well. I remember. And that is 
because a lot of the tools is the same that you use for metal embossing than yes. for, for paperwork. That's and true. a lot of those stores is, has closed down. It's just mm. sort of as if the scrapbooking thing is over yeah. for now. It's different yeah. things that people do. But a lot that's of true. those stores has closed. Yeah. Oh, that's a big thing, eh? Because it was a massive thing. I remember, you know, walking into any craft store, it was basically dominated by scrapbooking supplies and just all the papers and the textures and the stencils and all those things. Um, that's the stencils the stencils yeah. wow yeah and the other yeah. elements that they use with the, the scrapbooking you can use with yeah. the pewter and the craft metal as exactly. well exactly yeah i actually um it's a project i want to share with with a group i um i played around there was a scrapbooking store in Tauranga that closed down probably about a year or so ago and funny enough they had some um some metal sheets the colored ones um so not on rolls but they had they had sheets of it and it was a little bit thicker than the ones i got from creatica in south africa um it's a little bit slightly thicker gauge than those ones anyway so i basically bought everything they had and they had little little pots of um embossing powders i wonder if this would work on metal works like a bomb <laughs> it's beautiful absolutely yeah it's gorgeous yeah. so there's so many things that you can incorporate with a metal um yeah it's fabulous there's just no end to your creativity hey <laughs> is the embossing powder that you use um also the one that they uh the translucent no it's not translucent it's not the word it changes color as you move it oh, over yes uh is, is it iridescent iridescent Iridescent, that's it. Is that the word? Are yeah. those the ones you're using? I don't have those ones specifically. Um, I've got I've got lots of different textures because they come in different um, sizes. So some of them are a really fine powder and some of them are like little yeah. little balls almost. So they take a bit longer to melt. Um, I've actually found that those ones work better. The ones that take a little bit longer to, um, to actually melt when you heat it up with a heat gun. So... Okay. Let's stick yeah, the iridescent, the iridescent powders that I use is not the embossing one. You okay. get the ink pad. Yes. Um, Stazon makes the ink pad. It's a clear right. ink pad, but it's a glue. Yes. So you put that, that on one. your yeah, and then you use the the iridescent powder on that as well. Oh, and you don't beautiful. need to heat it up. Oh, it sticks really? To the glue. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, I have to see if I can get some of that. Sounds brilliant. They maybe in in pottery shops. They use mm -hmm. it a lot for pottery. Okay. Um, I'll send I'll send you the name. I've got a, a track name for that. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Brilliant. So let's talk about your favorite tools. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then I always say it's the next tool on my wish list. Because mm. isn't there always another tool that you want or need that will just make your life so much easier? And once so you get true. that, make the next one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Although with me, and it's it's weird, um, when I started out, I used all the pattern rollers and all the, the different ball tip tools and sizes and whatever. And now Cecilia and I were actually talking about this when we had our interview. And I said to her at this point, I use my fine tip tool, my fine tip Teflon tool, and my paper pencils, that's it. Um, yeah. Hardly But ever, you had... But I, I have all the tools that you can possibly you think had of. You have it all. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it's still nice to have it if you want to have a play and create some textures and things. But I found that I've sort of simplified. Um, and I, I'm basically using two tools at the moment. So, yeah, funny. I it's have my favorite tools, yeah. pencil. Oh, awesome. Um, not for embossing. Right. This is for writing and, and drawing. Yes. And this is the best thing that ever happened, the Teflon tip tool. Isn't it? Once you're there, you don't go back. <laughs> no. Just and the sound the that the metal make, makes on the, the metal tip tools make on the, on the pewter yeah. is enough to put me off. <laughs> so the Teflon is brilliant. <laughs> definitely, definitely, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not a tool junkie, but anything with texture, mm. I can't not have that if it's yeah. texture I, I have to have it if it's gonna texture metal i must have it Absolutely. Um, initially when i started out there weren't anything like texture plates you might have mm. been lucky to get um 
stencils to texture with. Yes. So I made my own texture plates initially. This is one of the, oh, the texture plates you. I did. Um, That's beautiful. And I, also did, I also did this, the roses. That's gorgeous. And um, there's a little piece of that I embossed with this last one that I showed you. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, and gorgeous. I did it both ways. So you can actually put it in a mo mobile hanging and emboss. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. And both sides patina. So I, I know that we'll have questions about this. How did you create your own texture plates? Because I'm sure people will would say they'd love to have a go with that. Air dry clay. These I did with air dry clay. Okay. You just have to be you can't put this through your embossing machine no, if you know an embossing machine. Cry. You have to be just careful and hand emboss on the plate. Okay. Um, awesome. Yeah. But you get in intricate detail that's difficult mm -hmm. to do with your hand. I don't yeah. do that. My eyesight's not that good. So I don't right. even go there. So I use the texture plates. That's e dry clay. It's so cheap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you can use them over um, and over again. Yes, you can. Mm. And I used anything that I could put my hands on to create a texture. Anything from lace yes. um, to jewellery to right. the findings that you get in the jewellery or the crafter shops. Oh, that's the an little, awesome idea. Yeah, yeah, anything you can do. Yeah. Lace does work very well. Yeah. yeah. I see that you're a steampunk junkie as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I've done a few steampunk designs myself. I love those little steampunk animals. Um, and just anything with cogs and gears, I just, it's, I love it. Yeah. So tell us how you, how you started with your steampunk journey. Wow. I've always loved steampunk. Um, so I actually got real watch parts, just those very small ones. And I um, combined that together and I did it in resin for jewelry. Some beautiful. of my jewelry is with that. Right. Um, but then, then you, there was some steampunk area because all of a sudden there was steampunk stencils and yes. the cocks and gears, texture plates. And yeah. Stuff. I think that one of the pictures that I sent you had that cocks That's and That's right. Gears. You've got those. Yes. I've actually got the same stencil. Yeah. 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 Love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I bought, um, I think it was off AliExpress actually, um, a packet of findings. Just a big, I think it was a, it's probably a three, four hundred gram packet, just with all different uh, sizes and shapes and colors. So there's coppers, bronzes, um, silvers, black, all the different size gears and cogs and things that you can um, then stick onto your projects later. So it's a good thing I'm thinking of them. It's holidays in New Zealand, school holidays. So I might just unpack them and have a little bit of a play with them. <laughs> I forgot about those. Yeah. You can also make a texture plate of that because yeah. um, you can use anything like um, I use, I explained it in the book. It's called a non reflective PVC. It's right. just like it's a little bit thicker than transparent. Okay. It's about, I think it's about 0.5 millimeter. Mm -hmm. So I stick all my, my cocks and gears on that in oh, right. whatever shape I want. And, and then you lay it. Yeah, Over I the... put um, double-sided tape mm -hmm. on that piece of plastic. You can even right. use Perspex. You can even use cardboard. Right. I stick double-sided tape on that, and then I stick all my cocks and gears in place. Okay. And then I put some baby powder on it to mm -hmm. just cover the places where the, the double-sided tape is still gluey. It still sits, yeah, it's still it sticky. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, just to get that rid of that. And then you can put it through your embossing machine. Or your rolling pin, whatever way you. Famous idea. <laughs> is that is that saying boot market plan? Hey, farmer, farmer makes a plan. <laughs> 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 I love it. It's just it, yeah, it's it's very cool when you don't get stuck on oh I, I don't have this right I don't know how to do this but literally just playing around and making a plan and figuring things out that's awesome. Make it work. Make, make it, work. it work. Yes, absolutely. So um. Right, let's talk a little bit about when you're not busy making your beautiful jewelry, what other hobbies do you enjoy at the moment? I like reading. Mm. Um, but if you read 
reading is one of those things that you can't multitask with. So no, it's not really working. No. Um, so I'm listening to the audiobooks a lot. Yeah. Biographies is normally what I like to, to listen to. Okay. Um, yeah. And otherwise I just go out in nature with my camera mm. and I just re refresh my, myself. Okay. Just out of town, away from all the noise and the hustle and always being in a hurry to get things done. Yeah. I just switch off and relax. Mm. and enjoy nature yeah. and bird it's, watching i love bird watching oh beautiful yes and i mean you guys i miss the birds and the wild the wildlife of south africa they i mean there were just so much variety and the different sounds that the birds make there's there's a lot of birds in south africa whether they just be pigeons or miners or whatever but there's lots of them and yeah even when you walk in the forest, sometimes there's you, you don't you don't hear birds. We've got lots of pests, unfortunately, who and most of our birds are um, flightless birds. So unfortunately, with rats and stoats and possums and all those things, they eat the eggs, and so so that's becoming a, a big problem in New Zealand. But um, it's interesting you say that every now and again. I, I I said to my husband the other day, I find that the older I get the more hungry I become for um, solitude, peace, and quiet. And just unplugging um, from technology, because it, it consumes our lives. My whole business is run um, online. I have to spend a lot of my time online, unfortunately. And just having those times when you can just unplug, go somewhere where there's not even Wi-Fi. I actually go to places where there's no electricity, like into the yeah. blues. And off, just off the grid. Really go off the grid and just recharge. I went, um, it's probably about a month ago, I booked myself out for three days. And I recommend it to every single person out there, just take yourself by yourself alone on holiday every six months. Just take three days out. It, mm -hmm. I feel like a new person. Um, and it, it puts a lot of things into perspective. Right? It's it really recharges you in a, on a way that um, no holiday can do for me. It's I need to unplug completely. Yeah, we need that. Absolutely. Yeah. There's two, even when you think you're going to have a couple of hours free, mm. then there's something that's needing your attention or somebody yeah. that wants something or this needs to be done or that's overdue. You need to get away. Um, Absolutely. Yep. No Wi-Fi, no telephone, no yeah. television. Yeah. <laughs> go with, with someone can't reach you even if they want to because it's so yeah. tempting i find that uh, uh, pretty much everyone i know is so addicted to our phones that facebook notification or the instagram thing it, it, we're completely distracted and it's like you can't really just focus on one thing there's there's all these different things going on all, all the time and yeah for me i need to i need to be not available to anybody i need to just go and sit on the beach and just <laughs> you know, zone out completely. <laughs> yeah. That is so, it's very good for, for my husband and son as well. They actually volunteer for me to go. They can they can read the signs when they can see, ooh, <laughs> mom's triggers are, are very shallow at the moment. We need to send her away for three days. <laughs> it's time for you to go. <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> oh, but it's brilliant. It does wonders for the soul, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting what you say about reading because I'm a I'm I'm an absolute book lover. I've on my bedside table there's at least five or six that I'm reading at the same time because it's parenting advice and something spiritual and something crafty and something business. It's you know it's all these things that I need to cover, but time really is an issue. And so um, I've started plugging in my headphones and while I'm doing my house chores and cleaning and crafting and whatever I'll be listening to something inspirational or um, yeah. uplifting or, or whatever and that's how I, how I tick that box because I'm a massive reader I listen to a lot of business podcasts as well yeah. Yeah, while I'm working or doing my yeah. work or just driving in the car exactly yeah I, I like to use my time productively um, it's like everyone is we, we all have only 24 hours a day how do I make it the most of it um so, but I, I find that I'm a little bit of a workaholic, so that's why I need to just unplug. Um, it's it's difficult to do, just do that. Yeah. Where I, I have to force myself. If, yeah. If I don't do that, I'll just carry on. 
Yes, I'm the same. And um, I've been sort of on a, a lot of things have been gearing me towards being quiet and trying to meditate. It's the hardest thing for me to sit still, even for just 10 minutes, to just sit still by myself, just meditating. So I have to physically remove myself from anything that could be a, a distraction. I think my mind is just racing a million yeah. miles a minute. So if I don't do those three days away every now and again, I think, um, yeah, it, it won't be pretty. <laughs> oh, that's well Thanks deserved. <laughs> oh, awesome. So um, you said that you wanted to quote someone on tips for beginners. And I actually... Yes, I want... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I wanted to quote Ida Glass, but I've changed my mind. Um, okay. So I decided to share some of my own wisdom awesome. regarding um, beginners. <laughs> yeah. Um, I say that in the beginning, you will gain a lot of knowledge from books and tutorials mm. and maybe even from YouTube videos. Yeah. But it's not going to mean anything unless you get your hands dirty. Exactly. Um, because you need to have the experience. Um, only, only once you do that. Um, you'll get the experience. Yeah. So my advice is to play and to practice mm -hmm. and to make mistakes yes. um, and um, to learn, mm -hmm. have fun and challenge yourself and grow that way. Absolutely. And then one day um, you'll look at the masterpiece and you'll have a surreal experience and you mm -hmm. will realize, wow, I did that. And that is the moment when you realize that you actually mastered your craft. Exactly. I love that. Um, I mean, for, for most of us, I've had lots of discussions lately with fellow artists and um, just talking about their journeys, how they got started, how they got onto the path of mastery. And we all have this one thing in common that when you start, a lot of us, um, you learn by copying others. You learn by implementing their techniques or doing a project from a book and following it religiously like step by step um, to try and get the same outcome but then it's so important to start using your own creative voice and to really start making craft that make you come alive not just copying someone else's work but really making things your own and we all say that you have to make so much ugly art before you get that one piece that when you finally realize like, okay, now I've nailed it. I'm, I'm on the right track. And finally yeah. I'm seeing some progress, but there's a lot of like just ugly things in between. And it's, it's part of the process. It's, um, it's just a natural way of life. And I think the thing is just to never give up. If you, if you're passionate about it and you enjoy crafting, just keep going, play, have fun, make that the most important thing. Hey, it's not, perfection trying to get it perfect but just relax and enjoy the process i think the main thing is we are too scared of making mistakes oh absolutely because, yeah and that's actually what we need to do because that is the way you learn yes. um if you look back and you say oh that that's just not what i wanted it mm -hmm. to be then you know if you haven't made that mistake then you wouldn't grow that is exactly. just like it is yeah and you wouldn't find those workarounds um it's, it's so important to make the mistakes to, to figure out the solution. Because you're yeah, the, 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 only, of the, it's the only way you won't make the same mistake again is if you find the solution to it. Um, yeah. So just keep playing. Definitely. Yeah. I wanted to just share some more of your beautiful photos. Um, tell us about this one. Am I still sharing my screen? Let me just check. Hang on. Not at the moment. There we go, this one, yeah. Tell us about this one. Can you see it? Yes, that is one of the projects that actually didn't make it to the book. Oh, no. It was, uh, <laughs> we had so many projects that, the, that, and we were limited to a certain amount of pages. I think, right. 87 pages. Um, okay. And we had more than that. So they had to decide which ones to take and which not. That is... You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you in in school you make these little fans by flipping the paper over and back, over That's and back, right. over and back, and then yeah. you fan it open. Yes. Now that was the same thing that I did there. Okay. I first embossed the metal. Yeah. I embossed the metal and I removed the color from that. Uh, it's light powder mm -hmm. blue craft metal. 
Oh, and wow. then I did the fanning thing. And I did I took it all the way around and I stick it together to make mm -hmm. this rosette. Um, and then I added Beautiful. the stone in the middle. I just, just, just gorgeous. put the yeah. I can just stuff that was lying around and I put it there. Yeah, how stunning this would look in a box frame. Just beautiful. Yes, yes, that's it will. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, that's gorgeous. Okay, let's go on to one of the other ones. Um, let me just see if I can open this one up for us. This is fabulous. I love how you use all the different stencils and the different textures and colors. It's beautiful. And I absolutely love your rulers. I'll, I think there's one with a ruler ring as well that I'll share in a second. Um, is it still, hang on, is it still sharing? It's sharing this, the previous screen, yeah. Oh, hang on, okay. let me just, can you, <laughs> yeah, that's can you see a that? sort of steampunky thing. Let me just do no, that. The screen is not sharing anymore. Oh my goodness. There we that's go. A, that's can you see a it? box that I, yeah, that was okay, a cool. toolbox that I made for my um, embossing tools. Oh, stunning. Um, the, the one on the left with a scripture in, it's the same color as the rosette. Yes, oh really? That's a, yeah, that was a texture plate that I used. Stunning. And then the one in the middle was a brown craft mm -hmm. metal. And okay. I've added the same color with a vintage patina oh, that beautiful. I used there on the clocks. And then oh, the one on the right was also a texture plate with the rulers. Um, the beautiful. top and bottom, I just uh, patinaed and polished. And the mm. middle one, I've added also the Ranger patina with, I think it's a rust color. Yeah, I've got that one. Yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. And, yeah. and that gold piece was a dye, a cutting dye okay. that, I that I did on the gold color craft metal. Um, and I've, it's, I folded mm. part of it, part of it is behind the brown and the rest mm. is coming over the brown. And then I added um, the upholstery pins on the corners to Gorgeous. get that effect. That's very clever. I and love it's that. It's a fun project, yeah. Yeah, and I, I hope this just opens um, up ideas for people to just, you know, use your scraps because sometimes you've you've got a little piece like that that you've cut out from a previous project. Use those things. Um, I've got a whole stack of wolf cuts that I've collected over the years. I, I didn't throw any of them away. And my challenge for a long time during um, the first part of the year was to only use my scrap pieces, to only create projects from that. And that was a wonderful challenge. And um, I actually made a heart. It's it's hanging behind me that I built up, so it's a, it's a molded heart, but it was built up using tiny little off-cut pieces, just, you know, the little corners that you cut out when you, when you stick your things onto mounting board or whatever. And um, I think that was one of my favorite projects. But also, if I, if I didn't force myself to only use those things, because you have to think completely out of the box and, you know, just come up with new ideas, I think that's the other thing, is to not get comfortable in our comfort zones. To constantly uh, challenge ourselves yeah. and move forward and try new things, and so what if it fails? So what? Make another one. Yeah, you know, we oh, can only exactly. it can only get better from there. <laughs> That's so, the thing. I get bored. I get bored very really quickly. Um, same. I will find something, or, or I'll get an idea of doing something, achieving something, and once right. I've done it, yeah, um, then the novelty is gone, and I move on to the next challenge. Exactly. Yeah, that's how it goes, Spe right? Ooh. Speaking, uh, speaking of the embossed heart, I have an embossed heart that I used a zip in. Maybe I'll send you a picture. Oh, really? You can add it. Oh, yeah, cool. uh, I've, cut, I've cut some pieces and I've put a zip in the middle. It's, it looks like the heart has been zipped oh, open. Oh, stunning. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, just, yeah, out of the box. Love it. So tell us about the little birds. This is gorgeous. That is also a texture plate. Okay. Um, and I emboss that on uh, the dental wax. You know, you get these thin sheets of pink wax that they use at the dentist yeah. to, to do the dental prints. 
and I boss that on that, and then I cut the shapes out, oh, yes. and I send it to a guy who do the casting in silver. So when oh, I get amazing. that back, then I, I need to clean it up, and then I make either pendants or um, oh, I actually had three of those, three different bird ones. Okay. I still got one bird one left, so I was thinking I'm gonna either make a ring from it mm. or I'm gonna put it in a frame to make it a almost a three a, a front back front middle and back sort of pendant. Oh um, beautiful. I still need to decide what I'm gonna do with that. Oh that sounds awesome. You should keep us posted on that. Love it. Um <laughs> Right, let's see what else we've got here. We've got this beautiful heart pendant as well. Again, the textures. This is just beautiful. I love your play on texture. Can you see this one? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, hang on. For some reason, my... I don't know. This is just weird how it's, it's okay, sharing it's and then it stops sharing today. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> okay, yeah, that one was... An actual fig leaf from my garden. Oh, um, beautiful. That I also did on the dental wax. I've put that through the embossing machine. Mm -hmm. Then I cut cut it so I have half embossed and half plain mm -hmm. silver. Beautiful. And then I've just taken a little um, silver wire and I called it like that to make the hook for the chain to go through. That's gorgeous. It's, it's just... so much fun. It's so much fun to play with it. It's, yeah. I, I can't get enough of doing that. It's, um, it's interesting. Before, it's probably about two years before we left South Africa, I, I was just bang on focused on um, making my own jewelry. I've been collecting gemstones for many years, and I like big, bold, colorful gemstones. And um, it, it, it's interesting how they always say, when the student is looking, the teacher will appear. So, because there was there were no jewelry classes whatsoever, I couldn't find anything, and then I was just, I was so hungry to learn this craft, and along comes this young guy. He was in his early twenties, um, and he advertised in the in the local newspaper that he's a silversmith, and if anyone would like to learn, you know, to to give him a ring. So I'm on the phone, gave him a call, and um, we actually became such good friends. He's a brilliant guy, just uber creative, um, just a dedicated jeweler. And, um, and so he taught me a little bit about silversmithing, but oh man, there's, there's so much to learn. It's just, that again is just a whole new world. But I made a few rings um, and he helped me set the stones and, and everything. But gosh, I didn't think this was possible with um, the way you've done your textures and things on here. It's just gorgeous. Thank you. Just go to, oh, yes, the, the ring I was talking about. Love it. This is gorgeous. <laughs> so that's not an actual ruler that you bent, is it? Is it, you've done? Um... Um, no, it was a texture plate. Okay. It's a texture plate as well. That's fabulous. Yeah. It's still sharing the previous picture. Oh, is it? Sorry, let me close them down. I don't know why it is, it's stopping the share every time I go to a new picture. There we go. Can you see it now? Yes, I can see it now. Okay, cool. That was the same. <laughs> in, in, in the dental wax, I've did that. The unfortunate thing with that is uh, that texture plate is about, it's a texture folder. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's, it only covers about 10 centimeters. So you don't have a big okay. range of numbers. Right. But I'll figure that out. I will somehow do something else and get You'll other numbers on that as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Okay, cool. Let me see if I can share the lot. Uh, let me just move this out. I think those were all the pictures you've seen me. So what I'll do is on the, um, on the video, I'll, let me just, bigger year oopsie there we go um what i'll do is on the actual youtube video i'll insert some of the other pictures like the project you've just shared with us in the inside the club which is fabulous that okay. butterfly mask so i'll put some okay. if you, and if you want to send me some more 
I'll I'll insert yeah, them I'll, into into the video clip so people can see. I will send you. I'll send you a couple of more. Yeah, that'll be awesome. So, any last uh, words of advice or tips or anything else you'd like like to share with us? Um, let me just see. Not really. Um, oh, I just want to mention. It's not a tip mm -hmm. or anything. The last couple. The last two months I've been working on my website. Mm -hmm. I just lost my energy for social media and I yep. wasn't, haven't been active on social media mm -hmm. since I think July. Oh, I've just good focused on, you, on actually. my website. <laughs> 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 detox sometimes, eh? <laughs> yeah, I just focused on my website. I've rebuilt my website. I used to sell through a third party website. Okay. But mm -hmm. I've now got my own e-commerce website on there. Oh, so brilliant. Okay. So I'm very excited about that. I haven't launched it officially yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking on figuring out how to do that. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, we're oh. excited about that. And I'll put in all your social media links and um, your website details and where people can find you. And um, I've, I've shared on the group as well the link to your book. Um, via Amazon okay. so if there's places locally available in South Africa where they can find it then um, maybe just share that with me and I'll, I'll post that in there as well so oh, well, definitely. yeah thank you so much for chatting with me Sus Susan because on your website it, it's S-U-Z-A-N so I was thinking it was Susan but it's Susan <laughs> it's the Afrikaans way of yeah. pronouncing it and um, it was absolutely lovely, lovely chatting with you and um, just learning, learning more about your creative process and um, the way you implement things. And um, thank you for sharing the advice of not giving up, just persevering with your craft. I think that's it's, it's wise and valuable words. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what's next for you. So we'll, we'll follow you and we'll, um, we'll stay in touch. Mm, thank you for inviting me. It was a great pleasure to speak to you. Um, I also just want to say thank you very much for the work that you do in your uh, metal embossing club. Um, oh, you're bringing all the wonderful people together and we can hear and see and listen to them. It's, yeah. it's awesome work that you're doing. Oh, no, it's, uh, it's my absolute pleasure. I think it's a little bit selfish on my part that um, I want to learn from all you wonderful people and, and share the knowledge. Hey, it's such a wonderful craft and um my mission is to just expose more people to it and yeah, and, and creating a hub where we can all come together and enjoy it together. So it's, um, I'm, I'm having so much fun doing that. So glad you guys are enjoying it. <laughs> good job. You're doing a good job. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we'll speak Thanks. soon. Thank you for your time, Susan. Have a good okay, day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.